Hi, I'm John Camaro from Scratch. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built our home office buildings. All right, so this is our home office built-in. We're, we're just about finished. We still have to do a little more work, some painting, and add some more hardware. So let me show you what we've done so far. We have two matching built-in cabinets. We have one on the left side, one on the right side. And between them, we have a, a desk area. We designed uh, to be wide enough for Lisa and I to be using at the same time. And this is the other matching side over here. Um, we've just started to throw some stuff in the shelves, but um, we still have to uh, tidy it up a bit here yet with the uh, hardware. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I basically built these things from scratch, and uh, you'll get an idea of how to do it yourself. Uh, one of the features that um, I've never done before yet is the is this B detail. So that's especially worth watching if you've never seen how to do that yet. So um, we'll get started. All right, so let's start our tutorial video with the face frame. So the face frame consists of two styles, one on each side. These are these vertical pieces here. And then there's the rail boards. There's a top rail, there's this divider rail, and then the bottom rail. Uh, now, because this is, has a bead feature, the styles will get the bead on one side, and the rails will get them the top row gets it right here and the, the bottom gets it on this side and the dividers will actually get it on both sides so in this first clip I'm going to show you uh, how I use my router table to put that bead feature on alright so now we're at the router table and I'm pushing my first style board through uh, in the router table I'm using a 1 8 inch beading bit okay and I've also got three feather boards I've got two to hold the board flat against the fence and I've got one coming from the top there to keep the board flat against the work surface. So I want consistent, nice, clean cuts that I don't want to really leave to chance. I want to make sure every time I pass this board through, it comes out nice and clean. Okay, so now that we have our bead detail on all of our boards, we're going to be notching them. So unlike a, a traditional um, face frame that does not have any type of bead feature, uh, the, the styles and the rails need to be modified to accommodate that bead. So what you can see here, this is actually, this whole thing here is a style, but we had to remove this section of, of the style board to accommodate for the rail intersecting it. So the rail will get a 45 degree cut and this style will actually be notched back here. So for these top boards, they get the single notch, and then down here for the dividers, they'll actually have both sides notched uh, right there. So this clip will show you how to do both uh, the cuts on the rail boards and the notches uh, for both the end pieces and for the middles. Okay, for my miter saw, I just have a nice high tooth count blade, and I make a pass and, and clip off the edge there. I have a one and a half inch Craig notching bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pass here and notch the style boards, okay? So I have a sacrificial board behind my primary style, and I'm actually have the style facing, the bead facing inward, so you don't see it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up where the, where the rail hits that style, I have a pencil mark on that board. And I'm gonna line that up with a line I drew in the work surface where the edge of the notching bit lines up with that. So I basically can just make a couple passes and get the perfect notch I want on those style boards. Alright, so we're back to the router table for the horizontal divider. And I just have two lines this time I need to line up. One for the left side of the vertical piece and one for the right side. I'm going to repeat the same process I did before. Line up the, the uh, pencil marks and push it through the router bit. So now that we have all of our bead detail work done, uh, we're going to assemble the face frame. And the face frame just gets assembled with some regular pocket screws. Okay, so there'll be a couple screws from each rail under the styles. The dividers will have a screw from the, cent the central rail, rail right into the style. And then these, this vertical uh, divider will have a pocket screw in, into both the bottom rail and that central divider. So I'll show you how I um, go ahead and do that. Okay, this is just a Craig pocket screw kit, and I'm using a uh, 
just the, the regular drill bit that comes with it. I'm doing this on the back side of, of my rail boards. And I'm going to put two holes on the wide boards and one on the thin ones. Okay, to join them together, I'm going to use a little wood glue on the styles or the rail joint there. And um, I'm going to use this table clamp. I have this as a Craig table clamp. It's great for workbenches, makes this process a lot easier. I'm going to clamp that down. And I'm going to be using one and a quarter inch long, um, I guess, pocket hole screws here. And there's a, a technique I like to do is where I put the first screw in and I just get it started. I don't drive it all the way home. And then, um, let's see, you'll see that here, just get it going. The second screw, which because I'm a klutz, I'm going to drop. And uh, the second screw I'll drive all the way in and then I'll go back and tighten up the first one. Let's talk about the box parts. We just talked about the face frame boards. Now this is the upper cabinet, but it's just, it was it's constructed the same way as the bottom face frame. You have two styles and the rail. The box is going to have a two side boards, one here and one here, and it's going to have a top. Uh, all the box parts, uh, including the shelves, are made from birch plywood, three quarter inch th uh, birch plywood. Um, so to make this, make sure this was extra rigid when, when it was completed, I actually made this bottom shelf rigid. And it's, so this piece is not adjustable, it's actually integrated into the box. So the first thing I'm going to show you though is my new table saw setup and how I just basically cut these parts uh, to length and width um, using the table saw. Okay, so I'm at the table saw station here and this, I'm going to be releasing plans for this soon. But I just want to show you what you need here. When you're cutting cabinet parts out, you do need some kind of long table or some kind of outfeed table like I have here. This makes this job a lot easier. And I'll also wear hearing and eye protection whenever you're working with power tools. So now that you've seen all the plywood parts cut out, uh, I'm going to show you the grooves next. So how you join the cabinetry together uh, when you're not talking about the face, you saw the face frame with the pocket screws, but when to join the, the box components together, I like using grooves and dados as opposed to pocket screws. You can use pocket screws, but I actually think uh, using grooves is easier and it's, it's better for glue up. Um, so in this next clip, you're gonna show, I'm going to show you how I uh, put the grooves on there. I used a router for this. And so this bottom shelf without this front, sits into grooves on either side here, as well as the top board. So the top board has the same thing, it has a, a, uh, either a groove or a rabbit at the top of that. And then what we'll do is we'll put glue in those joints, and we'll glue it together, I'll tack it in with some nails, and then we'll go ahead and throw our face frame onto the cabinets and clamp it down. And when, uh, because I wanted to show as uh, actually no fasteners, I don't want any nail holes I had to go fill in later, I just used biscuits. To join, uh, to join the face frame to the box. I did that for both the top and the bottom. I don't want to be going back and filling those in because I think you, you would end up seeing those. So uh, you want it to be, when you look at the cabinets, you want someone to really wonder on how they, they put, to put it together. You don't want to look at the cabinet and say, oh, look at all those nail holes. Oh, that's it's pretty obvious how that was assembled. So uh, check out these next clips and you'll see how that works. Okay, so I have my two sideboards here for one of the uppers clamped together and I have a straight edge and I'm making a plunge cut with my router. I've got a three quarter inch cutting bit and the router and I'm putting a groove across these two sideboards. So the reason I'm clamping them together is this guarantees that they will be parallel or a coplanar essentially. Okay so I, I am making a mistake here and when you do this if you if you attempt this at home uh, there's something you should do. So I don't have the, the work pieces clamped to the work table. So the workpiece is actually moving away from me, so that's not great. The other thing you, I would recommend is making a shallow plunge cut first, and then going back to the full depth. But this, this is a lot easier for long, awkward pieces to use a router vice a dado blade on a table saw.
direct the glue up. Now I filmed this in double time because I, this just, just takes a while, but I want to show you the basic process. Here's the upper cabinet on one of the built-ins, and I'm putting wood glue in, in both grooves, I'll say the, the, the lower and the upper there, and um, this is just basically how I put this cabinet together. So you can see it's a, it's a little bit of futzing around here in the basement or in the workshop. So I'm going to stand up one side, push the pieces in there, okay, make sure they're nice and tight in those joints. And it's also important to make sure that, um, for instance, that top piece there, that needs to be flush with the sides. So as I'm going around, I'm going to make sure that they're, that they're nice and flush. So while they dry, while the glue cures, I'm going to put a couple brad nails in to keep it together. Okay, uh, you could use clamps if you don't want any nails, but since these are on the sides and you're unlikely to see them unless you look for them, they're not on the front, I'm okay with using a couple brad nails here just to keep it together in the meantime. To join the face frame to the box, I'm going to be using a biscuit joiner. So this basically puts a little biscuit slot, and I'm going to be putting these slots all the way around the box, and then all the way in the, around the face frame. And that'll give me something to line the face frame up to the box, as well as me a nice strong uh, glue joint. So if you're going to be building cabinets, this is a great tool to pick up. All right, now we're at the glue up stage. Again, this is also double time. So I'm gonna make sure nice, run a nice bead of glue around the entire perimeter, basically wherever the face frame is gonna make contact with the box. I'm gonna make sure it gets uh, nice and into those biscuit joints, okay, those little slots. So uh, yeah, this is pretty important part. The glue sets up pretty quickly. So while this is going on, uh, you, you wanna be moving pretty quickly. And um, so what I'll we'll do is, once the glue's pretty much saturated there, I'll go plug in some biscuits, and then I'll run some glue over those. I also did a dry fit. Just keep in mind, before I, I got to this point, I, I put it together without any glue with the biscuits and make sure it, it actually went together well. Otherwise, uh, you could be stuck with a situation where it doesn't, and you have glue everywhere, and that's no fun. So once the glue's in, uh, and the biscuits are all in there. I'll uh, I'll put the face frame. I'll lay that on top, and then I'll I'll basically walk around and clamp it up. Uh, I'm gonna use a different method next time I do this. Um, next time I build a cabinet, and I'll get into that next time. But uh, this the, the biscuits it, it's great. It's just um, it's not perfect. I guess I should say. You can see it's kind of tricky here. Just I'm making sure the bottoms of the face frame lines up at the bottom of the box before I go around with these kit clamps. This is the other thing is when you start building cabinets, you do need a bunch of clamps. So um, I was only able to glue up one of these cabinets per day. So keep in mind that if you, if you want to knock a couple of these out, um, I, I would let this cure overnight. But if you want to do multiple cabinets a day and, and not use or use hidden fasteners without nails, then you're gonna need a bunch of clamps. So if I were nailing this together, I wouldn't need, you know, you could probably get away with less clamps, but uh, if you want that seamless, fastener-free look, then you, you do wanna invest in some good, um, some good clamps. Anyway, you get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. But uh, yeah, especially when you get bigger cabinets like this, it becomes a little problematic.
yeah, never be shy of using some brute force here to line your pieces up, uh, hammer a piece of wood. I, I recommend not directly hammering the workpiece, but um, if you need to give it some persuasion, now's the time to do it, because once this glue sets up, if something's al misaligned, you're done. Um, I also keep a nice little wet uh, paper towel around to clean up any glue that leaks out. Um, not so critical of painted projects, but um, it's good practice in general. So you, you get to see of how this top cabinet got put together. You can see the bottom shelf definitely adds some additional structure. Okay, now we're at the, the painting and finishing stage. Right now I'm uh, spraying some just some water on all the projects and what that will do is it will actually raise the grain which will then be able to knock down with some sandpaper. This is a necessary step when you're dealing with water based finishes. Now it's time for some primer. I'm using a nice low VOC uh, paint here. In the garage, you can see I still have plenty of plastic laid down, so in case any overspray, I don't want to ruin my garage floor. Um, and I'm basically just laying down a nice coat. I just want it to cover it. And um, ideally, you should do two coats, but really, you're looking at coverage here. Um, and anything is better than nothing. So I, I went through two quarts and, and uh, called it a day. So once the cabinets were primed, I then went back and painted them using our finished paint. I used a Sherwin-Williams Pro Classic in Ultra White, and I did that to match the trim paint in the rest of our house, because uh, it actually uh, gets built into the wall, so I wanted it to, to look like built-in furniture, so that's, that's one way I, I'm going to achieve that look, is by matching the paint. Um, so we've got two coats of the finished coat uh, primer, and then it was installed. I installed it to the wall. I used a couple screws, which I'll later I'll probably hide those, and um, it's to cover the transition between the cabinet and the ceiling, actually the soffit. I put in a piece of, of trim. Um, so yeah, I just have a little more work to do, and then we'll be finished with the room. So uh, thanks for watching. If you liked uh, this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, pretty soon I'll be publishing the plans for these cabinets uh, on our website. So if you subscribe to our newsletter, uh, you'll get access to that. So thanks for watching. Okay? Yay, You're supposed nice. to go. All right. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. Are you two, focused? One. You're good? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Hi, I'm John from Our Home from Scratch, and in this video I'm going to show you our how I flew. Hi, I'm John. This is the hardest part. I'll just do it. Okay.